You may not know this, but I am a big fan of games, puzzles, and really anything that gets my brain going. And the only way putting the last puzzle piece in place gets better is if you made the puzzle yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer Maker, and it's a beautiful day to make a custom picture puzzle using some surprising supplies. With all the work that we've been doing out at Maker Farm, sometimes we need a quick break from all the hustle and bustle that comes from building something of our own. Puzzles have been a great way for Greg and I to spend some quality time together between farming and construction tasks. Can you think of anything more fun and relaxing than doing a puzzle? Sometimes we even make a game of it just to see who can put together a puzzle the fastest. I've made puzzles with my Cricut before, including one that contained a hidden message. But today, I have a new set of puzzles to share with you. I'll show you how to combine my puzzle templates with images and Cricut Design Space so your machine does nearly all the work for you. We'll use Cricut's Print Then Cut feature to make sure all the pieces come together, so make sure your machine has that capability. Since our images will be printed onto sticker paper, we want to make sure that our paper gives us the best quality of print as possible. I found that the Cricut printable sticker paper works the best for this project, but you can also use the Staples brand printable sticker paper with equally successful results. Images turn out beautifully on both and they both adhere well to our puzzle base. On the other side of that, we also need to make sure our printer is capable of producing stunning photos. So today I'm using my EcoTank 3830 color inkjet printer because it has always delivered consistently great prints for me. And of course, we need a cutting machine to make sure our puzzle pieces are cut cleanly and easy to assemble. I'm using my Cricut Maker 3, but you can also use the original Maker, any Explorer series machine, the Cricut Venture, or the Cricut Joy Extra to cut your puzzle pieces. And now for this project, your Cricut machine blade also really matters. Depending on which material you use, and I'm going to go over those in a moment, you'll want to use either the deep point blade and housing or the premium fine point blade and housing. And don't worry, I'll teach you exactly how to choose which blade is right for your project. Plus, stick around to see how you can learn to make your own puzzle template as challenging as you want. For a full list of tools and supplies, plus links to everything in my material and tools list, head on over to my blog at jennifermaker.com 646. That's also where you'll find the written instructions with helpful photos and tips. So are you ready to learn how to make a picture puzzle with your Cricut? Let me show you where to get my free files and then we'll make one together. Step one, get my picture puzzle designs. First, download my designs at jennifermaker.com 646. You can either download right from that link by saving the project or download from my entire free design collection. To find it, look for libraries in the red bar at the top and then click either get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. Search the page for design number 646 and click the link to download the designs. The SVG folder has puzzle square and rectangle templates and the PNG folder has rectangular cat, owl, scarecrow and square fox and pumpkin designs. I made these images using an AI art generator and image editing software for a human touch. You can learn more about how to use art generators at jennifermaker.com slash AI art playbook. If you want to make the design with a hidden heart piece, the original puzzle file folder has the SVG and DXF files for that, including the version with a secret message of love. Now, if you're not sure how to download zip files, go to jennifermaker.com slash SVGS because the steps are similar for both SVGs and PNGs. Also, it's a really good idea to calibrate your Cricut for perfect print and cut results ahead of time. You'll find a complete walkthrough of calibration over at jennifermaker.com slash calibrate, including a video. Step two, pick your puzzle materials. Between my original project and updating this version, I've tried many base materials for puzzles, and my absolute favorite is, wait for it, 
a cereal box. Seriously, a cereal box. Now you do need a flat, clean section slightly larger than your sticker paper, so the boxes labeled family size or mega are easier to prepare than the smaller ones. If you don't have a big enough cereal box, I've also linked to my favorite light chipboard in the materials list, which uses all of the same steps. Both of these materials cut best with a deep point blade, which I'll show you soon. Now I happen to have a set of calipers, so let's see how these two compare pretty close, huh? And if you gently bend them, you can get an idea of how sturdy the pieces will be. Now, if you don't have a deep point blade, you can use craft board instead and cut it with a fine point blade. Now, it's going to feel thinner than the cereal box and the light chip board, so the puzzle pieces will be a little more delicate. But the craft board will still work, especially if you're not really going to take the puzzle apart and put it back together again often. That's what will really wear it down and, you know, make it kind of ragged and jagged and risk lifting the sticker's edges. So if it's just for display, no worries. Today, I'm going to use a cereal box so I can show you how to cut one to size and apply the sticker with ease. Step three, prepare your puzzle in Cricut Design Space. To begin, open Cricut Design Space and upload the rectangular puzzle template. If you are new to using Cricut Design Space, please go to cricutkickoff.com for an easy and fun introduction with me. It's totally free. Now here's how my rectangular puzzle template looks when you add it to the Cricut Design Space canvas. You can use any image you like that fits the shape, or you can use one from my files. So click Upload Image, then Browse to find the file you want. I'll pick the cat to fit my puzzle shape. Click continue and you don't need to make any changes on the next page for most images that is. So click apply and continue. Now you might see different upload options, but we want the image to be one layer with all of the details. So select flat graphic and click continue. Finally, click upload to add your image to your canvas. Your image may come in at a different size than you expect, no worries. You might even see a warning icon in the layers panel if it's too big for the current print then cut settings. It's okay, we're going to figure this out. Now we want the image and puzzle to have the exact same dimensions. So click the template to check yours. My rectangle template is 6.75 inches wide and 8.75 inches tall, but the image is nearly twice that size. So with the lock icon closed to maintain the proportions, I'll change the cat's width to 6.75 inches. That automatically makes the height 8.75 inches and matches the template. You can also make sure the size is matched by clicking the image, then using a range and send to back to move it below the template in the designs layers. Then select both the image and the puzzle, Click Align and select Center to put them on top of each other. You can see the puzzle pieces in the lighter design areas. Once you're sure the edges align and there are no warning icons in your Layers panel, keep both layers selected and click Attach to keep them just like this. And that's it. Our puzzle is ready. To begin making your puzzle, make sure the correct machine is selected in the top right and then click Make. On the prepare screen, you should have one mat with print then cut and basic cut in its details. Make sure your material size matches for each type of mat and material you're using. I'm using eight and a half by 11 inch letter sticker paper. Then click continue. On the make screen, select send to printer. In the print setup window, select your color printer. Make sure add bleed is toggled on to avoid white edges in case the outer cuts are slightly off and set Use System Dialog to Toggled On. Then click Print. Your system dialog window might be hiding behind Cricut Design Space, so minimize Design Space if you don't see the settings. Not all printer settings will be the same, but you can use My Choices as guidelines for yours. In the System Dialog window, make sure your printer is selected. Change the paper to photo matte paper or something like that, and make sure the quality is set to best or finest or highest or something like that. Make sure your sticker paper is loaded correctly in the printer following the package's guidelines. And then click print. Let the printed design sit for a minute in case any of the ink is damp to avoid smudges. And now to prepare our chosen puzzle base. Again, I'm using a cereal box. 
So without creasing the material, cut out the front of the cereal box, making sure you have a piece larger than the printed sheet. Place the cereal box face up so the backs of the puzzle pieces will be plain. Make sure there will be enough space to fit the entire sheet on the cereal box piece. Peel back about one inch of the printed design's backing from one end and fold it down so just a little of the sticky section is exposed. Then apply the paper's exposed adhesive near one edge of the material. And don't let it stick until you're sure of the placement. Use your scraper to adhere the sticker's edge. Then reach one hand under the printed sheet between it and the cereal box. Pull a small section of the backing away from the edge that you just secured. With your other hand, use a scraper to press the sticker down onto the cereal box in small strips. Peel the backing off from underneath as you go. Now just work slowly and make sure to smooth out any wrinkles before peeling off more backing. And don't throw away the backing paper just yet. Once the entire sheet is in place, put the backing paper on top of the design and roll over it with a brayer to make sure it's really well and secure. Use scissors to trim the cereal box along the sticker paper. Try not to bend the materials. Place the printed sheet and base material face up on a purple strong grip machine mat to match the screen. The black marks on the printed sheet are what the Cricut will use to make the cuts in the right spots, no matter what else is on the mat. Put the sticker's backing paper over the design to protect it again. Then use your brayer to secure the design to the mat. On the Cricut Design Space Make screen, set the base material to the cereal box setting. This worked for both my real cereal box and light chipboard in testing. Change the pressure to more for a cleaner cut. Check that your deep point blade is clean and in the clamp. If you don't have a deep point blade with the black housing, you can use craft board with the craft board setting and more pressure and the fine point blade. Press the flashing load button to load the prepared mat into your Cricut and then press the flashing middle button to begin cutting. When the cuts finish, don't unload your mat right away. Instead, I want you to gently lift a corner of the material to make sure the cuts went all the way through. If they didn't, press that middle button again to make a second pass of cuts in the same spots. When the cuts are complete, unload the mat, but don't try to remove the pieces right away because they are delicate. Now, if you have any issues getting clean cuts, go to jennifermaker.com slash cleaner cuts. Step four, put your picture puzzle together. First, use your spatula to lift and remove the excess material from around the puzzle. Gently flip the machine mat over onto your work surface, which might help some of the pieces come off. To remove the pieces without damaging them, gently roll back an edge of your mat. Curling the sticky surface will help the flat puzzle pieces start lifting. Carefully run your spatula between the pieces and the machine mat to help them come off. The pieces will probably separate from each other. Just watch for any that have tiny connections and help separate them to avoid ripping the materials. Here are what my cut puzzle pieces look like. And now you can put it together just like a store-bought puzzle. Step five, show it off. Here's my finished picture puzzle. Isn't it just so cool that we can make these ourselves? You are going to amaze everybody. Step six, customize it. If you wanna make a picture puzzle using your own template or use a favorite photo with different dimensions, I can show you how in a special program called Advance with Jennifer Maker at jennifermaker.com slash advance. You can create a custom puzzle in no time and they make excellent gifts. The Advanced program helps to advance your crafting skills by teaching you how to make these popular designs unique and special through tutorials and templates, as well as give you advanced access to my vast library of designs, projects, and resources. Plus, we have fun monthly challenges to inspire your creativity. Now, I may or may not be accepting new members into the Advanced program at the time you see this, but if you're interested, go to jennifermaker.com slash advance to learn more and see how it all works. And there you have it, your own homemade picture puzzle. I love making these so much. Now, because these are homemade and use different processes and materials than the puzzles that you can buy from the store, please be gentle with them. The cuts are clean and the sticker should stick in place, but even really expensive puzzles can start to wear with time and use. 
And these really do make a great gift for any puzzle fans. Just pop the disassembled pieces in a box and your loved one will have fun putting it together. These puzzles fit perfectly into the boxes from our gift box tutorial, which you can find over at jennifermaker.com slash gift box templates. You can even mail these puzzles. They fit right into an A7 or larger envelope, and then you can zip them off to their destination. I also have some fun handmade envelopes that would be perfect for this, and you can learn how to make those over at jennifermaker.com slash how to make an envelope. Would you like to learn how to create your own puzzle template? You absolutely can. It is so fun. Remember to visit jennifermaker.com slash advance for more information. And if you want to try your hand at making puzzles with precise cuts like these, I'd love to make that easier for you. I host monthly Cricut machine giveaways on my blog, so come on over. You can get all the details and enter to win at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut giveaway. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. Mm-hmm.